Today on Bridges, we're going to talk about the importance and the value of being a godly man. I'm glad that you could join us today for Bridges. I'm Monica Schmelter, and my first guest today is Tony Bolton. And Tony, it's good to have you on Bridges. Oh, it's good to be here this morning. I'm glad to have you, and we're going to talk about the important subject of fatherhood and okay. men. So let's start off with your family. How many children do you have? Uh, we have four. We have two boys, two girls. Uh, we have two older daughters and two younger sons. And so we thought we were finished with kids, <laughs> and then along came our boy, and then mm -hmm. we had another one on purpose. So there you know, you so that's, but uh, they're like ten to fourteen years difference between yes. them. So. Well, you know, Tony, we hear all the time about the importance of fatherhood and being a godly father. And yet, for men, sometimes I hear so many men say that they feel like church is made for women and oh, yeah. they don't get so much out of it. So let's talk first about the fatherhood part. What were some of the challenges and how did you, how did you become a godly father? Well, I was fortunate enough to have a great dad. That's uh, awesome. And uh, I was raised in a Christian home. So my father and I had such a great relationship and you take a lot of things for granted in life and that is one of them because you think like everybody's like us. Mm -hmm. But then you really hear and see and you know. Everybody's your eyes are open. not like no, you. <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, a good friend of mine that I went to school with um, in just recent years shared about, you know, his tragic home life. Mm -hmm. Well, as growing up I was around him all the time, never knew anything was going on. So behind closed doors, you don't know what people are experiencing. But for me, I had a great relationship. And so it really, and then my wife's dad is was a great father. So mm -hmm. anyway, so we had a good uh, foundation to build yeah. on. You know, so you which, brought a lot of good things into the family because you had a rich heritage. Exactly, the heritage was there. So uh, for me, and uh, when we became... Uh, conscious of uh, expression mm -hmm. like uh, for a lot of guys who grow up as a dad they're it's learned behavior my dad never hugged so I don't hug hugging is not who I am mm -hmm. but you know uh, you learn things and once you learn things you realize the benefit ah, so we became huggers <laughs> so, so and we begin to tell hey I love you so today what a great thing you pick up your phone anytime hey Hope you have a great day. Love you. See you. Bye. And that's mm -hmm. kind of one of our things. So we consciously, and it kind of spread through our family who on my side was not really huggers and on my wife's side was never huggers. And so all of a sudden people began to put a little expression behind, hey, love you. And <clears throat> so when we leave, that's kind of our, our trademark yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. Love you. See you. Bye. Yeah. So, so it means a lot. Yes. You know, so the message is <clears throat> that we can learn different behaviors. Oh, yes. And I think, you know, as far as our children are concerned, adults or young, we need that hug. We need that affirmation of touch. That's what it is. And I think that, you know, sometimes men, as you say, are raised with, you know, this is not what we do. This is not manly. Right. It's not cool. Yeah. It's not cool. Mm -hmm. And so consequently, that goes on to the next generation. It You're does. passing things on whether you realize it or not. Right. I, mean, I think, you know, if you, <clears throat> around our house sometimes, my girls especially, can can mimic you. And they they <laughs> say what you say. And so you don't realize what you say until you hear it back. You, and you go, Dad, that's you. And I go, yeah. yeah, and you know, I think that's one of the things about parenting and, and fatherhood and just being a parent in general that you get to see what you're like as you get older and you see that in your child who's now an adult and you're like, oh, yes. that's, that's right. what that looks like. That's right. The yeah. acorn don't, doesn't fall <laughs> far from the tree. It doesn't. It doesn't. What would you say now as you look back in raising <clears throat> your children and, and being a godly father, are there things that you wish that you would have done differently or had a second chance to do? Absolutely. And, you know, I want <clears> to <throat> bring in the fact, you know, like, uh, my ministry is to men and we do hunting yeah. and every time you go hunting, you learn something because you can never enter the woods without learning. something. If you do, you don't go back because you, you kind of like you're unteachable mm -hmm. because, and that's the kind of the way I look at it with raising kids. You know, um, every time you have a child, it's a different child. So the same thing you did with one doesn't right. work with the other. Right. And so in hunting, one of the key things you always say is, listen, 
Did you hear that? And was, as I was learning about the outdoors and all this kind of stuff, I would hear a guy go, listen, did you hear that? And I'd go, no. Mm -hmm. What are you hearing? It's learned behavior because he's trained his ear to hear certain things. And I think as a father, I think I would, I would be more keen to stop and listen and go, uh, my daughter's telling me something, but mm -hmm. I didn't hear it. Yeah. Or my son's trying to relate to me without telling me the whole scenario. Uh -huh. With And if I had trained myself better to say, wait a minute, tell me a little bit about that situation. Or I could enter in or open the door because I would stop, look, and listen. Yeah. Uh, we wrote a song like that, <laughs> Stop, Look, and Listen. And it's very key into raising children or mm -hmm. other areas of your life. You, you've got to stop, look, and listen. And listen is a key thing, I think. Yeah, I th and listening is such a gift to be able to give it is a gift. to our children. We're talking about fatherhood today <clears throat> and men's ministry and just the importance of listening. And so I think that sometimes we can, as parents, be afraid to listen or be so busy that we're not listening. Absolutely. And uh, But what you're saying is that's something that if you could do over again, you would listen more. Yes. But the hunting thing, like that intrigues me. Like I... I I am interested in your ministry, you know, because I saw on your website that you're an enthusiast about the outdoors. And I have heard, Tony, so many times over the years on this show and personally, how men just feel like there's nothing really in sh at church for them. Right. And you kind of get these guys and you go out into the woods and you say you learn spiritual lessons there too. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, a lot of what I do is uh, say a particular church or a uh, some host will sponsor a men's outdoor event. Mm -hmm. And what that'll be is it'll be a whole evening. Sometimes they call it a wild game dinner, uh, just lots of different names, uh, beast and feast or uh, blast and cast or whatever. <laughs> they, you know, there's all kind of different mm -hmm. names because it, it encompasses people who love to fish and hunt. So sure. it's old outdoors. But the main thing is we kind of get together because uh, I call it my camo connection. So the guys who are in the outdoors or ladies or whatever, especially men, when they see a guy in, in camo, they go, oh, there's a bro. He gets yeah. it, you know. Yeah. So, and a lot of times people who are not involved in church, they feel that way. The church doesn't get me. They don't understand, right. you know, I'm into the outdoors. I love to hunt fish and, and it's nothing there for me. Mm -hmm. So when we do an event like that, we really try to not do Christianese, I call it, the language of the church, you know, it's the amens or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I use a term called booyah, which means <laughs> how awesome is that, you know? <laughs> so when you sing a song like Our God's an Awesome God, then you can go booyah, you All know? Right. Or after you just shot something or caught something, you know, you throw your hands up and go booyah, how awesome was that? And you're looking for somebody to give you affirmation, Absolutely. you know, whatever it was. So when we do those events, we, we try to connect that we are understanding where you're coming from. Yeah. We have the same love and passion. Right. Well, there's something relatable. There's exactly. a there's a connection there. And I think that those defenses of being in a church building or feeling awkward yes. or like I don't know what to do here. Right. Because we forget if we've been going to church for a long time, people that haven't been there forever don't know what to do there. Exactly. They're like, "Okay, I don't know." I don't and they're know. a minority because you know, they feel awkward or mm -hmm. whatever. So yeah. I try to tell people, okay, you're not in church. This is not church. Yeah. We're just a bunch of guys talking about hunting and fishing mm -hmm. and our love and passion. But then I get a chance to bring in the gospel yeah. and actually pray with them. And it's been fantastic to see um, like probably 50% of the guys who come to these events yeah. are unchurched. Don't They don't go to church or whatever. And um, I was just in Erie, Pennsylvania and... Uh, 27 guys or so gave their heart to the Lord. Yeah. Another 27 rededicated their life. You know, that's miraculous. It is. That's, it's, it's phenomenal. That's miraculous yeah. because, you know, you, when you look at men and not feeling at home in church, and we're talking about fatherhood today, all the studies show that if a child doesn't have a father that's present in their lives, they right. don't do as well in school. Sure. They don't do as well growing up. This fatherhood key is just critical to a child's development and Absolutely. growing up. So it's I, a missing piece of the puzzle. Yeah. And I think uh, I realized that more <laughs> as my sons came along because um, probably, and I'll, I'll just use it, probably seven out of 10 of their friends yeah. didn't have a dad at home. Exactly. So, you know, I'm like, 
wow. So we would have these, uh, my wife tours and sings and right. speaks. So uh, when she was gone, she would say, what do you have? And I said, oh, I got the, you know, uh, young men of God church going on over here. What I was saying was I've got my sons and right. all their buddies coming to our house for pizza and we're just having a good time. But then I would get a chance to pray with them. And, yes, and, and I think that that's something that men in the church can do for their sons, their daughters, and kids absolutely. in the community. Be a role model, especially right. if that child doesn't have a father that can be present in the life or that wants to be present. Absolutely. What are some of the things that you teach men about being a godly father, about how to overcome some of the obstacles that men face? you know, like career and financial pressure sure. and all of that. How do you overcome that to be a good dad? Well, I think one of the things you have to realize is that God never called you uh, to make a living. He called you to make a difference. Amen. So uh, it's a tragic thing in our life when we, we spend all of our time and our effort over a career, over making money, whatever, and then we lose our family. Yeah. So that's a total failure in my book. That's it is. Not a, a it's a total failure. It's a total failure. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, it's just like uh, we were sharing earlier, uh, earlier uh, one of the songs I sing typically in, in a men's event is You Can't Take It With You. And what it is, it's just it's opportunities that we have yeah. to speak into our kids. Uh, let them know you're real. Uh, be authentic. You know, I don't want my kids to think I'm one person here with you this right. morning and then this afternoon, oh, that's you don't know the real dad. Right. I want to be authentic and, and I want them to realize that I have ethics. You know, um, my kids all know me. Dad's a rule player. He's a <laughs> rule player. If it says don't park, he's not going to park. You know, and those are things that I think that you, you teach ethics. It's a sad day. A friend of mine, good friend of mine, he has to teach ethics to Christians at a Christian college. And I'm thinking, yeah. We've lost so much. <laughs> what What is wrong with this picture? Yeah, so if, much is if wrong. If anything should be a, a part of our character, which is our God reflection of who he is, is that we have ethics Amen. and we have, you know, we have principles that we live by. And that that would be in us because Absolutely. Christ is in us. So we've got just a minute left. Sure. I know we're talking about fatherhood. You mentioned your <laughs> wife and traveling and singing. What is this Let's Take a Country Road? It's a, it's a, well, living in Nashville, we, it was our attempt to say, hey, we can write, you know, something that kind of fits everybody. So this is has got the Nashville flavor with all the good pickers and stuff on it. And so it's a lot of mixture of just good up-tempo music, some heart-wrenching stuff on there. So it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun on there. Well, yeah. I want to thank you for coming out oh, and my for pleasure. being with us today on Bridges. We're going to continue to talk about being a godly father. We're going to meet up in the next, next segment with a father and a son who have lived out um, that legacy and are still doing that. So stay with us. We're going to talk about being a man and fatherhood in just a moment. You can purchase a copy of today's show for $15. Call us at 615-754-0039 or send a check to the address on the screen. Please mention the program number on the screen. The blood of Christ is the only cure. It gets down to the root of every single thing that ails us. There's not an addiction, there's not a generational curse, there's not any root of sin, there's nothing that the blood of Jesus cannot cleanse. Visit monicaschmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your event. When I truly turned my heart to the Lord, He took every sin I ever did away from me. God really is your other half. God, yeah. <laughs> He's the only person who can really, you know, fill those holes and cracks in your heart that you're so wanting someone to fill. It's no good to have a big dream if you're not putting yourself in motion to yes. go after that. If you were just joining us today on Bridges, we've been talking about what it means to be a man, fatherhood, outdoor adventures, all kinds of good stuff like that. And so we're going to continue talking about those sorts of things, but we've got a special, special treat for you today, a father and a son, and they're both pastors. And so I'm just so happy for you to be able to meet them today. And Pastor Jerry, welcome to Bridges today. Thank you, Monica. It's certainly a privilege for us to be here with you. So good to have you. And this is your son, Pastor Barry, and you've been here before. 
I have. It's always good to come home to this place. Thank you. Always enjoy all the crew, and, and, and you're always a delight to discuss the Lord and all the stuff that goes along with Him. Yeah, well, we're just so glad to have you, especially like Father, Son. I just think mm -hmm. this is such a special treat. And, you know, um, Pastor Bear, I know I've heard you talk about your dad before and growing mm -hmm. up and, and growing in the faith. Tell us a little bit about that, if you would. Well, growing up in a pastor's home is never the easiest thing a person can do. <laughs> That's um, what I've heard. <laughs> there's a lot of outward pressure and a lot of people watching and and you feel like you have to project a certain Im image and at the same time maintain your humanity in the household. Mm -hmm. But growing up with my dad was a little bit different um, in that I can say without a doubt, everything he preached, he strived and, and sought grace to live. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people are good when the camera's on yeah. or when the crowd is there. Yeah. But my father was always one and still always is one that possesses the character that complements his message. Yeah, and that's really ultimately what it's all about is the character of Christ yes. being formed in us. And you know, Pastor Jerry, as we, we talk about, you know, being a man today and a father, we have such, what I think such a great challenge because there are so many people without fathers. Yes. And so uh, young men grow up without knowing the blessing mm. of a father. Um, how did you, d d how did you learn how to be a good dad? You know, I, I came up in a time in the church where special needs were not always on the front burner. That uh, they thought if we went to church and prayed and lived right, everything would work out okay. Yeah. Uh, so we didn't do a real good job 50 years ago in recognizing the different needs of the home and all. Uh, but I was privileged uh, to see it in front of me all my life. Wow. My dad was a pastor as well, and uh, I never entertained the thought that there were options. If you represent Christ in public, then you live Christ in, in the private moments yes. of your life. And... Uh, just never changed whether it was the pulpit or the den watching a football game <laughs> or or taking the the kids uh, camping or going fishing or whatever we were doing um, I never wanted my children to look at me and think any way other than what they saw publicly. Wow. You know, uh, what did Paul say? I am what I am. Yeah. And that's at all times, yeah. at all times. And it's in all different situations. I think sometimes, mm -hmm. Pastor Barry, people think, you know, that church is that one situation. And you, yeah. your father mentioned like mm -hmm. fishing and doing other things. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes people think that those, that's a totally different life. But right. from what I'm hearing from you all, that's not how you lived. Compartmentalization. Yeah. People segment their lives today, and this is my faith life, this is my home life, yeah. this is my work life, this is my social life. And you see that so many times all of those lives they try to live are in conflict with one another. Mm -hmm. But if we go back to the scripture, for me to live is Christ. Mm -hmm. So that means he impacts my public life, my social life, my work life, my home life my faith life, it's all one life that we live, that he lives through us. And I'd like to say to dad in front of all these people, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, mission accomplished. No. When you set out to, to live your faith in front of your children, you don't have one child today that would go, that dad of mine, he was schizophrenic or mm -hmm. uh, he was a hypocrite. No, yeah. Yeah. the character necessary to sustain God's anointing in his life was always there. And two things, he, he didn't talk a lot about my, my grandfather, but mm -hmm his dad, both of them were known for the same thing. And this tells you how generations can impact generations. Mm -hmm. My grandfather's ministry, he was known as a man of great love. Yeah. Amen. Everywhere. Yeah. My dad. Matter of fact, I told him when, when he graciously began to hand the reins over to us at GC Church, I said, <laughs> if you weren't so good at this love thing, it wouldn't be so hard for the rest of us. <laughs> you know? But what a, what a, if you're going to set a bar, yep. teach your son to love. 
because that's the biggest challenge we face as men yeah. is learning how to love and relate. And both my grandfather and my father were known as people of great love. And that's a great testament. Yeah. And that's such a great legacy and such mm -hmm. a great example. And I know some of you that are watching, you might be from a different kind of situation, sure. perhaps yes. like I was where, you know, I just didn't have that great home family life. And so sometimes people like us, we think, well, I could never, I could never have this. And I want to say this, it's never too late to start. And I know, mm -hmm. Pastor Barry, that a lot of your ministry, and for mm -hmm. you too, Pastor Jerry, even though you've retired, you know, you never really retired, no. but you know. <laughs> um, help us to understand like how we can start now, because there are so many men watching and women, Pastor Barry, mm -hmm. who didn't have a dad that had this great example of love. There may not, the dad may be, you know, gone or just not in the equation. How can people start now? Wow. Well, one of the challenges you face is maybe when a, when a man and woman get married, that young lady may come from a household with a good father that pours into them love. My dad loved my sisters and, mm -hmm. and, and it's challenging for them to find a mate that's had the benefit of the same yeah. thing they've had the benefit <laughs> yeah. of. Uh, but here's the thing. <clears throat> It's so hard on men today because we're expected to know things naturally that we're just not acclimated towards. Mm -hmm. So how do we start now? Mm -hmm. First of all, I would encourage every man to get connected with a local church who ministers to men. Yes. Because if you will minister to the man, he leads that family mm -hmm. and he sets the tone and he creates the, the atmosphere in the home that will shape the society and the world. And so many times mom's been the spiritual leader in the home because frankly, women are more spiritual than men naturally. They're better creatures than we are. We come with a lot of baggage <laughs> as men. But the, the good news is we can learn mm -hmm. the principles and the behavior that will so value and love into our families. Mm -hmm. So if you've, got a, if you've got a man in your home that's just driving you crazy, don't walk away from that man. Challenge that man to get with some a group of men. I have a men's group every Thursday morning, every Friday morning in a car lot. Mm -hmm. And don't tell our wives, but we go there and learn how to be better at this man thing. <laughs> you know? But the, the, the key is finding somebody to help you, just anybody. Yes, yes. And so. I think that that's so important. And I think also, you know, when Pastor Barry said, it can be learned. I think yes. that that's what we have to understand that people just aren't born great dads and born right. great mom and, you know, we learn these things and we do have to see it. So you, you have to get into a good local church where there's a men's ministry or other things and women to realize that we're not perfect and neither are men. And sometimes our expectations are just over the top really hard for, for somebody who may not have ever seen a good example. We can all learn together. And I think that humility in a home. Yes. Um, that we're all learning and growing, and hopefully that the character of Christ is being formed in us. So you, Pastor Jerry, come from this great legacy, and that's yes. wonderful, but people can start their legacy now, can't right. they? Let me give, give you an example. While, while our basic principles come from God's Word, yes. it's the only absolute truth that we have mm -hmm. from right. the face of this earth. But in, in the late 80s, maybe early 90s, there was a song that came out that impacted me greatly. Uh, I certainly can't uh, say that I agree with everything that uh, the person who did this song, uh -huh, sure. but this song was entitled, If Tomorrow Never Comes, Would You Know How Much I Loved You? Mm -hmm. I took that as a God moment, mm -hmm. and I looked at my wife, I looked at my children. Mm -hmm. I looked at my church, because none of us have the promise of tomorrow. No, we don't. And I thought, they may not have known up to this point, but from this moment forward, mm -hmm. if I don't have the opportunity tomorrow, they're going to know today. And it became a daily activity mm -hmm. to communicate that regardless of where you are uh, in life or in, in your home or in your church, boy, after all, 
what does the good book say? God is love. Amen. And if love doesn't get it done, it's challenging to get it done. Yeah. So. Yeah, because the word says the greatest of all. Yes. It's love. Yes. He's <laughs> telling love. the truth that there was a marked time in <clears throat> in his relationship with all of us. Yeah. Where when we got off the phone, it went from being see you later yeah. to I love you, son, yeah. or I love you, honey, or, or whoever it is. And I remember that age in his life when he became aware of that now. Um, that lets you know that even when you come from a legacy of love, you can always improve. There's always the opportunity mm -hmm. for that. Yeah, it's like we never really get there. Right. <laughs> you know, no, that's true in our relationship with Christ. It's true in our relationship with our spouses, with our children. We never really get there. Relationship is ongoing. Yes. And, you know, we're either working on it to get better or we're drifting farther apart. There's mm. like no really in the middle there. So today is about really learning how to be a godly man, yes. uh, giving our families all the love that, that they need. And it's just so important. Love is just essential, isn't it? Oh, without a doubt. And, and not only in this world, uh, what did Paul say in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, the 13th verse? Mm -hmm. Now abideth these three, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. There's such a moment of truth in that verse because we get on the other side in the presence of God. Uh, faith is not necessary any longer. Right, because we're uh, going to see Him. <laughs> yeah. uh, hope is not necessary. <laughs> no. <laughs> but love will yeah. dominate mm -hmm. that environment, mm -hmm. that atmosphere. Uh, throughout the endless ages. And we can learn to love. And even the Word says that yes. the world will know that we're His disciples yes. by our love for one another. Yes. So that's yes. the essential thing. We are out of time, but thank you, Pastor Barry. Thank you for having us. And thank you, Pastor Jerry, for coming. Thank you, Monica. It's been a pleasure to be with you. So as we remember today, we never really get there. We're all learning right. and growing. So lean on Christ, trust in Him. Give him your everything, and you will never, ever, ever be sorry you've made that commitment. We're out of time, but we say goodbye, and God bless you. You can purchase a copy of today's show for $15. Call us at 615-754-0039 or send a check to the address on the screen. Please mention the program number on the screen. For more information on a guest, visit our website, ctntv.org. Join the Bridges community on Facebook. Visit Facebook and search for Bridges with Monica. We would love to connect with you. Log on to www.ctntv.org where you can make a prayer request, view our program guide, see who's on Bridges, or even watch one of Monica's latest teachings. Log on to www.ctntv.org.